there is a link between chess and one of the big things, themes that we've talked a lot about every day, although we haven't talked about it yet, and that is artificial intelligence. Um, and uh, AlphaZero was, for many, one of the original big AI breakthroughs back in 2017. It was a computer program developed by AI research company DeepMind to master the game of chess. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with that. So I'm curious about your take on AI, both as it relates to chess, but also as it relates to our lives right now. Well, first, as it relates to chess, I mean, chess has been at the center of artificial intelligence research since the 60s and 70s. And I knew Richard Green Greenblatt, who was a pioneer at MIT in the 70s, played his program. Ken Thompson, who's now at uh, Google. Uh, and this is this was one of the most popular events at any AI conference for a very long time. Uh, indeed, as you say, the DeepMind program, which eventually uh, Google bought, uh, is, was a phenomenal breakthrough. And what's been interesting, I think, to chess players is it just keeps getting better. They thought computers were gods in 2000. And then the deep mind came along and it was even better. So the rate of improvement is phenomenal. I'll also say that it, it turns out hasn't been bad for chess. It would, uh, it's actually made it more interesting so far. I hope there are other aspects of our lives which are true, but I think, you know, having seen how fast it evolves in chess and it's not once. I think with chat GPT, we've just seen the beginning. I think in five years, you won't even recognize how phenomenal it will be. So yes, this has been a long time coming. I speculated about it for a long time based on chess. And I think we're finally at the dawn of this. I don't want to sound evangelical because I don't know which way it's going to go. But uh, yes, if you look at the experience of chess faster than you think and for longer than you think, but also not necessarily as detrimental as you might think. Humans have adjusted and it's been very good. Well, can you elaborate on that a little bit? You said it's made chess more interesting, how? Well, first of all, uh, people had thought a lot of positions were boring that the computer shows, well, try me at this position. And it turns out to be just wellsprings of creativity, positions where the best player in the world, Bobby Fischer, I think would have maybe even given me a draw back in 1975. Uh, now is the beginning of the game for many players. So this depth of learning, uh, players venture much more complicated and interesting positions because they have other ways to explore them. Uh, so uh, surprisingly, we thought it would lead to more draws, right? If you figure it out better, you're going to get more draws. Not at all. So uh, here's this simple compared to human intelligence game, which you would think you would solve out, and yet you find these layers of interest. I think we'll see this in art and many, many things. I don't want to get into the whole socioeconomic ramifications, but uh, I, I think chess has been the cutting edge and uh, will continue. It gives a hint at what we're going to see with other things. Kenneth, really fascinating. Thanks so much for taking the time here with us today. Kenneth Rogoff, Harvard University Chair of International Economics and former Chief Economist at the IMF. Thanks so much. Thank you.